things come to fruition. So now I'm curious again, do you do you maybe look at Nefelios, take that one away? You know, he's still going to get his hands on the Zeri. Enable's very good, but that might be a, a bit of a, a jump up Rakan. There you something go. We went into game one. If, if you miss game one, in game one draft, we're talking a lot about the Rakan because it's PB God's most played champion. And historically, it's the champion you would associate with on. But there wasn't a heavy presence or priority put towards it. But this time around, BLG are going to go back to what they're yeah. comfortable on. And it enables the playstyle, I feel like, of on really well. A lot of that mobility, but a lot of the give and take of engage and peel. And we'll see, obviously, it is a high priority for them in this one. And maybe maybe foreshadowing to how they want to set up their composition. But we do get the Wukong and Zeri taken by OMG this time around. Yeah, so far, OMG in game one, when they were in red, they did pick Aphelios over the Zeri, you know, despite it being reversed last time. But this time, going to want to get their hands on this. So we are just going to get the natural swap over. So for OMG, clearly saying, hey, we don't really care too much about that Aphelios pick itself. They will get their hands on the highest priority jungler open since the Vi is taken off the board. But Shun is someone who I think has been more willing to like lean on something like a Lee Sin and like play more aggressively mm -hmm. early on. Also has been another jungler who's played the Viego to where like Aki wasn't someone who's playing that. Or uh, I'm not going to get my hopes up. We always could have the other Shun special, <laughs> which hasn't been meta for a while. I would really like for them to go into an aggressive stance for Shun. I think that's where he thrives if you can back him up. And it looks like we do. We get the Viego for BLG. And now for OMG, I was going to say you can either look to just match support here if you so want. You know, they, they always could just go for like a Lulu and have that unshade their presence there. But it looks like valuing not wanting Shanji's Kasante to get banned out. So last game, it was Bin getting his hands on his comfort champion. This time around, Shanji, I mean, he has double the games on Kasante than he does the second most played. Uh, 23 now going to be on the Kasante is 11 on the Scion. So you know you're going to have that safe pillar up in top side. And OMG are once again just setting themselves up for like really solid front to back team fighting with the comp they've put up to where for BLG, right? You're going to be relying a lot on the resets to be able to come out from Diego. I feel like when you have the Rakan, also sets you up more to potentially be able to fish for picks since he can be a little bit more aggressive in terms of trying to like walk into the enemy jungle because you have a lot of escape tools to be able to get away and mm -hmm. not get picked off yourself. I'm wondering if we do get the NAR run back here, uh, or if we do get maybe something else a little bit comfort for Ben. We'll see the focus from OMG be towards those solo lanes, absolutely. Is this somewhere where you ban the Annie, maybe change things up like that? But it is uh, an aspect where you get the Gwen ban here, so still that top four lane tops. focus for OMG. And yeah, I'm sure tops. some more bot lane focus, maybe even a little bit of mid lane. No, it will be the Nautilus for BLG. And NAR, Ken and Fiora, Gwen all off the table. And now, ooh. We're actually going to get the Annie coming out. I would I would more expect this to be down towards the bot lane. PP God's played it four times. Cream has not played it a single time just yet. But I guess this is the mm. response to what you were just saying. Don't ban out the Annie, but take it away. Uh, so it does give you that freedom to at least have another uh, ban up towards that top lane. So now yeah. it's going to be about bin. I mean, you always do have the Jax up, but, you know, Jax is something you run in uh, to Cassante quite traditionally. So I wouldn't be surprised that one is locked in. And now it's going to be about where Yigao defaults to with so much taken away i mean on the Annie. Things. yeah i was gonna say vagar was another one he was like quite big on during the split right now they have a composition that looks like it's gonna lean a lot in terms of the jacks being able to put up side lane pressure so this Do would it. go ah uh, that would have been fun i want but the love block so bad but a little bit of stability a little bit of a setup and spacing in team fights actually gonna be pretty big here so an opt-in to give Yagao some resources, give Shun some resources, and have Elk at that late game carry potential there still on the Aphelios. Very, very tried and true composition from BLG. And we get the adaptation. We get Creams Akali. And we're going to have a slugfest in this one. And I like what OMG have put together. I think OMG's comp looks, uh, again, it looks both comfortable, very standard, very strong. Like, great team fighting, strong front line. You have the CC setup coming in from the Wukong, the Annie. You're going to have flanks at BLG need to worry about with the Akali and potentially be able to get on that Aphelios to where for BLG, not a great front line, right? Recall not someone who gets all too tanky. Same with Viego and the Jax. You do have a lot of zone control. They were so far in the lead. A disheartening loss, but a moment for triumph as we get into our third game of the day. It's BLG versus OMG in our lower bracket round four of the LPL Spring Playoff. This time around, 
I feel like bot lane, also more potential for some excitement, right? Having PP God on the Annie, having on back on the Rakan. So definitely right, the, the chances to engage are going to be there for on PP God, going to use that range advantage, try to whittle them down. So hopefully some more fighting able to come around, come out this time around. We hit on it for OMG when they were going up against CDG. It felt like a lot of times Abel and PP God were getting the better of some of those trades down there in that 2v2. And that's going to need to be the case, uh, at least to some point in this one. We have seen two respective games where both Elk and Abel really shine through for their teams. Obviously, Yagao getting uh, the first MVP, but Elk having a big say in how they won that game. And I think, obviously, the trade-up of ADCs, things changing up not that much. I feel like both ADCs are really comfortable in these two, but it is about how they execute in team fights and a little bit of that comfort in the series itself. We'll see PP God and Abel playing pretty aggressively down here with the Annie as well. Waiting in the brush, gonna try and find themselves a pretty solid trade to come on out. Shouldn't be anything too bad thus far, but we can see junglers, right? Passing to opposite sides. Aki gonna make his way down towards his bot lane to where Shun. I'm interested to see if he's gonna do anything cheeky. You can see now, early. walking towards that tri brush. If he got a save that stun here, he hasn't used it just yet. We'll have the wrap around from Shun, and this would be so big. PP God gonna go for a little bit of vision, oh, but there's the, the engage in first blood for BLG right to Elk. Ward comes out like five seconds too late. Shun already making his way down to the brush, and great start from BLG. I mean, we saw the gold lead last game, right? BLG have mostly been the ones who have had a nice handle on the early game. They're gonna keep it up so far in this game three. That's so big, and the huge gameplay from Shun to wrap around that quickly. Just the two camp into the gank there, and it sets up BLG's bot side really well. I'm sure they'll revisit that, but now it is uh, kind of eyes on Aki, what he wants to do after this first clear. Yeah, Aki gonna hopefully be able to find something for himself, but now with Abel and PP got pushing in, uh, should be hard to find anything on bot lane right now. You can see mid in a bit of a fine position too. Yigao should be pretty safe now that he's level three and, and has the cage to really be able to prevent any ganks from, from being all too lethal. Let's see, uh, maybe a little bit of opt into the late game here from OMG. I still think Cream needs to find some resources on the Akali. I love the Akali later on as well, but I definitely want to see a little bit of priority given over to resources to Cream. Because right now, Yagao's just going to be stacking up a storm, right? He is literally the definition of late game infinite scaling. And I'm wondering how OMG kind of deal with that to some extent. I think you're waiting to, you know, like see bounce backs come uh, off tower, you know, Yagao pushing in. And then maybe especially if Yagao sits up for an aggressive cage, that is your window. But for now, it seems like BLG is still the one to get a lot of good vision control set up uh, up towards his top side. So I guess it's a match, right? Looking at the minimap, OMG did get a word of their own on Raptors. For OMG, it feels like it might just have to be placed though, right? Not too many opportunities mm -hmm. going to show themselves in mid. Maybe top side will be an angle. You have a lot of CCs up there with both Shanji and Aki and Bin has been playing very far forward in lane uh, every game so far. Tons Not of, even just uh, a series. Action. Every game of playoffs. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> You're right. <actually>. See, <laughs> we don't. Uh, Mizzou, I'm not. I'm not a huge stats guy, and we sadly don't have forward percentage in LPL. But if we did, sadly. I would be interested to look at it to see what bins would be. I always want the uh, jungle percentage or uh, presence percentage at least. But we did get a lot of pings from Shun back down towards bottom lane. You know where his eyes are. There's a nice roasted turkey down here for him to eat. Uh, as we will see actually a response from Aki to try to get this 3v3 going. And remember that Abel and PP God both have their summoners up. PP God didn't use anything last time around. He did just get blown up before he was even able to react. So we're on not having that flash available. Would potentially mean if a 3v3 broke out, would be able to pin him down and try and find that easier kill coming on through. There's a ping back on a dragon from Shun, I think, but Aki getting a little zealous here. We'll start it up with the priority from bot lane. Nope, he's gonna not going to start actively it. start it up. Just going to make sure the blast plant isn't there for Shin to find Just any like cheeky ways over the wall. Maybe, you know, find his way into bot lane once uh, those control, if those control words do get uh, cleaned up around the bottom side. 
So we do see kind of a uh, back to farming for both junglers. I'm still looking for Shin to continue to be active. Cream looking to take some heavy trades on the Gal here as they have hit those level sixes. They're wondering when Cream can get those perfect executions off. We're seeing pretty heavy stalemates in the two solo lanes, actually in every single lane. And a bit of a far cry from, I feel like what we've seen so far in both other games. I think it makes sense too, coming on through, right? You don't have as much setup online as with the Annie, but Shun. Oh, gonna look Cream. Cream took the wrong time to do it, but he does have the shroud and he is a ninja. We'll see if he can get out of there. Does have the perfect execution activation to get out. Still old blow just to escape from a gank where Shun didn't have to commit anything. So now they're going to keep up presence in mid. You guys going to be able to push off that wave and Shun just going to be able to start making his way over to bot side river. Going to start this one up and it looks like OMG not going to be able to do anything about it. Going to have to back off and going to be some early stacking once again. I feel like the dragon started very early in all three games yeah. so far. From blue side. And uh, specifically, OMG got the first two last game, but then weren't able to really have a hold on the rest of them. Obviously still ended up winning the game, but it was that presence early on from blue side that we've seen every time from the objectives. And that will be first dragon of BLG. Elk pointing uh, some pressure down the way of PP gotten and Abel down on bot side, but not able to get that turret plate just yet. You know what I want, Mazel? Because we have a slow game. I'm just going to tell you what I want. I want Belveth mm -hmm. mm -hmm. back. You know that like short what stick where we had people like Kanavi playing Belveth? Really fun. Yes. Really interesting time. Uh, you know, it's you know, been, it's I been a long really time. I actually really like Belveth because it's, it's a different way of approaching the game, I feel like, when you are able to use a, a mechanic like that. I, I agree. You know, I agree. Uh, I would like to see going back to Shun's uh, Hecarim, you know, one day. That would be really cool. Uh, but, you know, we do have a Rift Herald coming up, uh, Lyric, so maybe a little bit of an importance here for BLG has been already setting the stage here, rolling out the red carpet. We'll have the scuttle crap. I guess I was gonna, I was going to say, we're going to see, because Bin has pressure on top side, uh, so BLG would have a more natural lean into the Herald. But look at the mini-map. Mm -hmm. God has started to move towards mid, so you're right. Well, she might be set up for a, a scrap. It's happened on the we top side of the map. We actually get the movements. Yeah, OMG the gonna be the one to start it off taking first. Advantage. Yeah, it, it should be. The last, the other times we've seen Rift Herald, it's really been just about taking advantage of map presence and knowing where the enemy is. But this time we might actually, nope, we're, we're not gonna get any tests. Shun is nope, nowhere might. nearby, and look, OMG, but look at the map. They could. Oh, There's a here. long way to run. It's gonna be. I think it's by time, but we've seen BLG even when they don't get the objective, can posture for the fight afterwards and be able to take something. Oh, Finn might time. get baited though in the top side. You gotta watch a couple sides. Do you have your chameleon eyes? Because we're watching two different fights. As now Cream is caught out, and there's a reset city waiting for BLG. Can't connect that short Katas though. As he's going in, Aki is hitting that, but PP got can't get the CC down. Now you got Bin in the fight as well. There's the event horizon. Chanji goes all out, but BLG had bounced on to Aki, and everything snowballing the way of BLG. One more CC down, and Chanji gets locked. Lockdown and two kills to you go. Once again, BLG might not get the objective, but they understand when you're using that right, you're taking damage from the objective. You're kind of put in an awkward position, and they're able to angle for the fight. Cream going in incredibly early, getting caught out. I guess not expecting Shun to be there in Do time. It. And Do it. a ton of kills. Elk. This is something we saw so many times in the regular season. Elk playing so aggressively. Abel on the other side as well. But we'll take a look back at that replay. And again, that snowball that started and, for BLG. And just look at the split focus from OG, right? One committing to Herald, two people trying to take down the Jax Cream. One V2ing right now because he knows he can buy time for Shuriken. But still not expecting a huge knockup from on. Straight into the stun from Diego. Reset comes out. And even though his numbers advantage, I was scared when Shun started missing everything. This is the Shuriken flip. He's actually going to miss his ulti as well. You know, Doesn't get to play a very there. often, all right. But true. But we're going to see here Yagao buying a lot of space. The cage is well to trap Aki in. And then they're able to turn back around on Shanji uh, with the stun coming through from Shun. Yeah, the uh, Annie take and the CC down. Really, You're right, really though. good stuff. And I yeah. feel bad. Why am I calling him out on missing things yeah, on a champion that he on. doesn't have to play? <laughs> he doesn't ever get to play a Kali. I want to go look at his solo queue record. <laughs> Do these, does he just play since he knows he's going to play Viego? He just like single handedly plays all the champions. Like, maybe I'll take their soul one of these days. Probably doesn't. I think it'd be a no, nice bet doesn't. to assume he doesn't. But look, <laughs> components now. It's a waste of time. So Tell me that, dude. 
Mythics across the board. BLG are, are really close. Just a little bit of gold. I assume we'll start seeing some backs and bases come out. Potentially before Dragon, if they can hit those, those break points and then try and feel really strong to be able to get on their way to that second Dragon because 3k gold lead in 11 minutes is pretty yeah. impressive. And I think it's BLG's best gold lead so far of, the, of this series. Yeah, and I think in game one, we definitely saw a lot of strength from them, a lot of pressure. Uh, obviously, we had I think there's a lot of control, Shun. Yeah, but not exactly. gold. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And now we're seeing that gold, right? You already got the Divine Thunder completed for Shun. He'll be back out of the map playing aggressively. You got a dragon spawning in 35 seconds. The timings are just working out so well for Beal and Billy. And even matching matching the swaps coming through with Bin facing off against Shanji in mid and Yigao <laughs> moving up to that top lane. Which, I mean, theoretically would be more favorable from Cream, right? Because it's a longer lane to play through, which means if the wave would get pushed out, uh, Cream has more chance for this mobility to try to run you down. Ooh. Okay, knowing they need to get a reset off, they're just going to use the Rift Herald mid. A little bit of uh, pressure there and trying to get back and get back to down to this dragon, potentially. We do have pressure from BLG at bot side, but nothing going to come of it. Just trying to get control for now. Uh, make their way into river. They already have vision control. Uh, tons of wards littered in OMG's blue side jungle. So it looks like they're wanting DPs to start off so this one. Weird. Yeah, I mean, OMG wanted to commit all five members down to the side so they can try and prevent this dragon from happening and potentially force a fight because they still see Yagao pushing in waves top. We'll actually get it back from Yagao. He's going to TP mid lane, I'm sure. Try to enjoy this fight. I just love that we're getting the clap of the boxing gloves and we are getting a five on five here for a second dragon. We'll see if Abel can get around the corner. He's got to get back to his teammates. We got Ben going in now on Pop That Quickness. Abel is all by himself, but BLG might not be able to turn around. They, I don't do that. No, he's there. Now they turn around on him. He has to use the cleanse. Cream comes in. Abel gets a kill the whole time. He had a secret agent behind you. Now the dragon is the focus for OMG. Abel still by himself. He will flash out of that Inferno, but OMG take down Ben and take down the dragon. Oh, and oh, oh, wait, no, what? No, the no, toothpaste no. himself has struck again! <laughs> My god. The fact that he steals the dragon, that's so heartbreaking for OMG. And I gotta say, hopefully we jump into that replay fast. Because what? on, like, that what? looked like, what, that was one of the most like half-hearted engages I have ever seen. Just like kind of walks up, I think he tagged Shanji with the quickness, they walk back. And I'm with you. I, I don't know if they knew Abel was there, but even then, <laughs> even if they were to commit on these four members, they should have though, because I would assume they would have seen him like like walking when minions were there. But the wave did just crash, so they clearly don't know he's here. But we don't yeah. see the, the part where on kind of half heartedly tries to engage, and nothing happens, yeah. and it just left BLG in such an awkward place, in my opinion. Even had the wraparound from Abel not come through, so a lot of weird spells used. Uh, Flash able to come out, Bin gets separated. And yeah, I feel like the Observer did them a solid there by not starting at the actual start of the fight. Oh! My goodness, there you go. A little bit of hype from the crowd, but a steal from Yagao evens things up there. You got those uh, able 1v4 moments in the end, but it wasn't enough. And that is two dragons to BLG now. Oh, well, a little bit by himself. He needs to be a little careful. We do have a Rift Herald spawning about 20 seconds. I'm interested to see how this will go. Cream doesn't have TP, but he can start making his way over. Yagao would have to do the same. And I think we could start to see problems from BLG, like in the last fight. Maybe it's why On was so hesitant, why they weren't able to really commit is Rakan, I mean, you don't really have anyone who's, who's jumping, like any big beefy frontliner jumping in with you, setting yeah. you up, kind of being another kind of threat distraction to pull attention and make them focus on. You're just a squishy little Rakan having to do things all by yourself in this big, scary world. Unless I you got it. Ben there. Ben's a pretty good superhero. Uh, everybody gets one, and Ben is the one. Uh, I think his jackal will actually be really, really big in the end. I think Shanji will have a lot of setup for OMG as well, but speaking of setup, Aki, he's caught in a little bit of trouble. Does have his clone, though. Takes a lot of the front of damage, though, in the end. A little bit of finickiness in the mid lane. Just trying to set up, find these picks. We can see a gal moving over now as he pushed in bot wave, so BLG should be angling to start this one up. Now no flash on, on, but also no flash on Aki. So a bit less threat going to be coming their way. I think Yigao with the cage, if he can, you know, really get towards topside river or zone them off, it would just give them an, a free objective over to the side of BLG. 
OMG are coming to pressure mid. You have Aki who has sensed out. They're doing Rift Arrow. Wants to get around the corner here. Shun, he will be able to get it. Won't be able to get the eye though. As now he might just sacrifice his life. No, he does get out with his flash. So that'll be a big summoner spell burn. Ben wants to collapse. Does OMG try to deny him here? I don't think they can. There's a wrap around. The Event Horizon is trapped up. PP God and Aki is escaping, but no, he doesn't. Is there a reset available? Shanji, he can't kill Shun, but he finally gets him. Bin gets another one. Shanji flashes for a second kill, and now Abel finds him himself in a precarious predicament as the Grand Entrance knockup comes through and on gets the kill. And I'm honestly surprised that went so sideways for OMG with the fact that Shun not able to find a reset, like Shanji bringing people out of fights, but still Cage locking people up on with the CC. It was enough in the end. I sadly wasn't able to keep my eyes on Bin that whole time, but looked like he had a pretty nice counter strike as well. And he's actually the one that picked up the Herald if we do go back. So we know where that was going to be placed. Could be placed in top lane wherever he is, but we're going to full replay of the fight here. Bin doing a nice job of at least zoning off. Aki and Shanji just running down the OMG jungler. Should sadly not able to get in there, get a reset yeah. for things to go off. But then Abel left, left on his lonesome. Where's all the homies? <laughs> hey, I mean, he, he feels like he's been against it the whole time. Last, the last fight, he was literally 1v4, secret agent behind enemy lines. Maybe that's just the feel for this game three. Yeah, sad for him. He just looks over both shoulders, sees it both cream. I guess Shanji didn't really peace out. Shanji did just ult over the wall and tried to run his way back around. It just cream sadly, held up were, the deuces. You were too far. <laughs> yeah. Cream uh, knew there was things more important, like also not going down. But Dragon is going to be up in 30 seconds. Uh, we're at a point now where Mythics have been online pretty much across the board, even in the last fight, but now starting to make our way towards second items, especially for people like yeah. Elk and Yagao. Elk Splash. Important cooldown. Going to be back up just in time for this fight to come on through. And look, BLG have already been the team who managed group up mid first, pushing that wave and start really getting vision control down towards this bottom side. I feel like it is. Now, it is all about mid lane. I feel like it's always a bit worse when you don't have your Vagar here because his cage can only do a lot to make it awkward and dissuade OMG from just being able to walk in, though. Very true. It, it is that spacing. We were kind of talking about it in draft. It does allow you to do a lot of things. We'll see if uh, BLG can utilize that to some extent. Shoot, in some trouble against Cream here. Cream could opt in to go all out himself. Maybe not the ult from Shanji, but a little bit of presence from OMG now around this dragon. And we are putting up the Dukes yet again. It'll be another item completion. The Seraph's Embrace locked up for Yagao. Good job by them, making sure they get more power online before they opt for this fight. This time, Finn. Not even to try and angle for the flank. I Cream's think they have an idea of where Cream is, so it looks like he's going to try and be the one to mark the Akali and make sure that Cream finds no value, no access to Reset. the Reset. Uh-oh, now the Dragon at 5,000 health. Cream still waiting over the wall here. 3,000 on the Dragon. Can they get in the pit? Moonlight Vigil goes through. Dragon over, but now BLG trying to take the fight after. They got Cream on the flank. Cream, can they catch him out, though? He's got the Shroud. He's resetting the fight, and he gets back to the rest of his team. Looks like BLG want more, though. They want to get another pick off here. They got Ben going forward. They are split, though. OMG, get out of the event horizon. And BLG can't find anything. They will now push this outer tower. BLG were just so cautious. It seems like they were so afraid and so aware that Crane was looking for the opportunity to play that they didn't want to overcommit going forward, which kind of just gave OMG that dragon, allowed them to slip away. And I get it, right? You, you got to put respect on Cream Zakali. Never know yeah. where it could come from. But nice reprieve for OMG, buying themselves some more time because we haven't really hit on the gold lead because a lot's been happening the past few minutes. But uh, the gold <laughs> lead ain't looking too good for OMG. Five, almost 5K in favor of BLG. But here, I mean, Chicken already goes goes over. They're able to get away. Shanji having the mobility online. And then everyone instantly, when they see the Akali, they're like, yes. you know, you turn on the Akali, try and get him down. The, the 23 14 from the Monsters Inc. They got they gotta, you know, take care of this ninja. <laughs> but sadly for them, like it just buys time for the rest of the squad to go away. I also yeah. feel bad because I thought of that 23 14 thing or 19, whatever it is for Monsters Inc. Because Munch actually referenced it a while ago. We were we were reminiscing about that. Great movie. Shout out to Munchables. Monsters University not as good. True King. Still alright. It's all. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's, okay, it's nostalgic. I guess. It's nostalgic. Yeah. 
Uh, just like this game is nostalgic of both these two teams, it feels like chaos across the way. Now we do have that strong strength for BLG so far, but there's been some give. Everything's creaking just a little bit more, Lyric. It is. Now we're going to see if anything pans out around this mid lane because BLG really just trying to choke OMG out. But PP got has Tibbers online, stun ready to go if he sees an avenue onto Elk because Elk is playing so far forward. I'm actually surprised. The PP God. That is Elk, though. Is it more bloodthirsty? I guess he does have that cleanse is. and flash up. Play with a little bit of confidence. It can lean to a lot. Now, we do have second item Ooh. completion there for Abel as well. Runan's Hurricane, second piece for the damage puzzle of Abel. We'll see the final outer tower finally fall for BLG. Yeah, makes sense now. Why OMG or hesitant, waiting for those items to come online now. Thornail. Yeah. Also picked up by Shanji in that top side, but it is really telling of BLG and their problems, of how consistently they've been able to get a gold lead like throughout playoffs. Again, even going back to their J to G series, but the fact that they've ended up here in the lower bracket and you know sitting at one and one against OMG, we need to see them be able to convert this time around, especially when OMG having that Akali who's going to constantly pull Yagao to a side lane and not allow him to be consistently grouped up with the team and kind of utilize that zone control that we were hitting on. Yeah. I think there is a uh, very menacing Titan on the side of BLG, though. We had mentioned him earlier. We got the infinite stacking event horizon of a champion slash player in mid lane for BLG, Yagao. It was 3 0 oh, 3. Will be working his way to his third item, has nine stacks on his Dark Seal. And while we put so much presence on Elk and Abel, I think Yagao now will have a lot to say as we move forward. Elk and Abel, the ones we've been looking at all day. I don't know how long all day is, because you know it's it's overnight for us. Since, you know, we are <laughs> it is nice. we we are this side of the world, but so far this series already going further than I predicted. Though that is only because I'm only predicting three O's in my predictions. <laughs> uh, for no real Boomer reason bus, other than baby. exactly, exactly. In my mind, it was like, yeah, you know, you I don't want get predictions on my last train, All right, the prediction king over here. Hey, right, well, you know, not, in my not mind, yet, not yet. in my mind, I was like, ah, you know, I got it last split. So this split, let's just have a lot of faith in the teams we think are gonna <laughs> win. And now, I believe it was Shun who just picked up his black cleaver. So now, an even stronger point of power. And both teams this time around, have been way more patient and in terms of like waiting for some of these neutral objectives to spawn before heavily committing into looking for picks blg have been fine with just being like okay we are just gonna match you know you're a collie inside so we're gonna use bin to pressure and just wait it out and yeah. lmg they feel happy with that because when you're the team behind and you're the team just trying to snowball and trying to like slowly inch your way back into a game the longer you don't have to fight you can just wait to get True. more gold onto able you're, you're gonna take that it, it's huge, and I think that's why we're seeing a little bit of that reservation play here. BLG, maybe on the first to uh, try to start up these uh, oh. these double objectives. I, oh, I Pull love the this. trigger here, and I <laughs> this really, is really like this. Yeah, we can see them now. And I mean, if they go and spot out bid, what they're never they gonna know. They're never gonna know. They literally, what? they think that they're just doing dragon. This is a, a two man. Oh no, okay, they, know, they, know. they know, they know, they know. They're on their way. They, they realize not everyone is here. Kareem, he's gonna get oh. here. They get into the pit. They don't have it though. No, Should the, the, the damager isn't there. The Baron goes over to BLG. Cream. He needs to make the difference, but he doesn't. As the primordial burst surges forward, so do BLG. And that's Elk with the red and blue ready to go for the AOE fight. It could just turn it back onto the dragon. Should be what BLG do. I like how the light bulb slowly flickers. OMG are like, yeah. okay, two members of BLG mid. You know, Kasante walks into Dragon. Okay, one member here. Okay, one member here. One, like, where, two, where are the rest of these guys? Yeah. Three, wait, there's two more people on the map. Exactly, and it was it was so great. Nice heads up play by BLG to make sure they end up getting both objectives. They could have been heavily punished, right? It was a gamble, but it was a Absolutely. gamble that paid off. And now we're gonna I've even take some it. more structures. I've, I don't think I've ever seen that call made, but I absolutely love it. You forced the hand of the team on the other side of it. And I think that's such a big moment. Already a lot in the lead, so it makes the decision easier. But I think still in the moment, that's actually so decisive. And now we get that third item completed for Yagao. And we'll see a little bit of a replay of those shenanigans. I mean, there isn't much of a replay here. We're seeing right at the end when OMG figured it out. Shun was low, but sadly for Cream, 
the cage gets put down. So you can't, you can't go and try and finish him off before the smite can come through. And then there it is, the cool animation of the big burst of evil energy coming out from Yigao. Uh, and Kareem, he just, he stood no chance. Gets his signature pick. Gets his hands on the Akali. And not able to bring anything. Uh, not able to get anything from it this time around. Because across the table, you have Yagao. A man who is not alone known internationally, but also literally just coming off of a JDG Summer Championship. And it was a lot about how he came into his own. Not alone that last year, but this year specifically so far for BLG. It's been incredible, and he has stepped up in the right moments every time. I mean, he really has been, like, the big performer for BLG across all three games so far, right? One MVP in game one. Game two, he was also the one who started catching Abel out in mid-game. And this game, having another solid performance, has kept the pool pretty, like, pretty small and steady in terms of like what his defaults have been. But it just shows he knows what's strong and he knows how to deliver on these champions now with the Siege here. Even the perfect guns from it uh, for Elf to be able to get off you know, consistent damage from the maximum range. He then can get some more poke onto the turret itself. Maybe OMG want to pull the trigger. The Event Horizon has been used, so there's a little bit of that spacing gone. One more shot from the Calvin. They're not going to overstay, though. They don't want to overextend. They still have mid pushing as well. If they do get a catch out, that is huge. And that tower falls. And that bid the whole time, pressuring in mid as well. Shanji not going to be able to do any damage to him. This is why a lot of teams have put respect on Binge Jax. We've seen that band out in first rotation in some of their series so far in playoffs. Another reason why I thought Shanji wouldn't be so confident is to just blindly go towards Cassante. Yeah. And. Right, again, top lane. So we haven't hit it all too much because it hasn't been that interesting. It's really just been that the bin coming out with pressure and that that, that just gives uh, BLG like another avenue that they can count on. Like another person who is gonna be able to make sure that the enemy top laner can't go over. Another avenue to be able to walk first and like have another laner probably to potentially create numbers advantage. It's been one of those one of those like silent benefits that they've had in this series. And what on paper should have been a slugfest in my mind. Shanji versus Bin. Yeah. On paper, it sounds it sounds a bit feisty. It sounds a bit you know a bit spicy. It's the most exciting thing coming into this, right on paper, like that that literally is like oh my goodness, what is gonna happen? And all I had running through my head was the the gift from Bid, honestly, of just it, but and now just copy paste Shanji's face on it. Uh, but speaking of those kind of fisticuffs, we are approaching a moment where BLG are trying to push forward a lot of their vision. They are on three items there for their big carries in Yagao and Elk. And it's something that they can absolutely continue pressing forward against OMG. Yeah, I mean, now Void Staff going to be there. So the front line of OMG not going to matter even one bit. Three items. And I love I love the priorita prioritization of like the stopwatches coming on through, making sure that you're going to be able to survive the initial burst. When every time around, it does feel like we have a bit of a disparity of like, okay, this comp's more indexed into like having solid DPS, and this comp mm. is more burst heavy. OMG definitely, the Akali, the Annie there, going more of that route. So the stopwatch can be able to pay dividends if Elk even ever does get engaged on. But that hasn't been the case so far. As, in, as uh, the siege continues, they don't have the wave, they don't have the Baron buff anymore. There is about a minute for their soul. And it feels like we're getting deja vu, but I don't want to say so just yet. OMG have a lot more executing needed if they want to try to find some reprieve like they did last game. But it is now a continued siege, even without those minions under the tower. Elk not going to get caught out. That event horizon does connect a little bit of chip damage onto OMG. And they just feel confident to keep going redemption. Being picked that up by so on. Big. To make that sure that so they much. stay healthy and that they can just keep up the siege. Dragon about 20 seconds away. It's gonna be really easy for BLG to default and just pick this one up. So, it's one of those things where great job by BLG, but at the same time, it's going they're to going in. Oh, they're trying to catch out Elf. He flashes out, he goes golden. You got the lightning crash from Abel front to back. Elf's He's down. And OMG, they've got a front to back now themselves. Abel's got it up down, and Ben Horizon comes out and separates. That's some of that spacing that works so well for BLG. And it means that OMG can't capitalize any further. But you see what happens when you get a little bit too close to the snake. And I think BLG didn't expect that engage just as much as I didn't expect that engage. It just looked like OMG were going to stand there twiddling their thumbs slowly, wait until BLG were going to back off for Dragon. Finding the opportunity to be able to go in, buying themselves some some space. Going to TP in and try and let's make go, sure that Soul just go, go let's over. Let's go. 
It's tempo gaming, baby. They're going straight for this dragon. There's no response. The spin from BLG, they're going to TP into the base. This, this is a decisive moment. This could be a stop of Max. They could try to get in here, but it is a base race right now for Finn. Oh, they he do stops stop it. Cream. That's so big. He's on to the is Nexus, over. I believe. There's another kill. Solo Bolo for Yagao. And Ben has opened up the gates for BLG as OMG are frantically running back, but there's nothing you can do as Ben has equipped a real weapon. And BLG are 2 1 in the series. What a way to end the game. Like, I don't know how they didn't see that coming. Just Ben having TP up, no one being able to respond. I love the, the, the weight that came from on. You know, use the scrying plan, don't go right away, but still eventually end up finding the timing to be able to cancel that. And BLG should have won this game, right? They had the gold yeah. lead. Like, the, the result shouldn't be a surprise, and it doesn't feel any less deserved the way it happened. But the way it happened was still, still a bit, I don't know. There was that silly? last minute. It, literally, I was getting deja vu again. Oh, my God. I got Oh my God, do they actually start fighting back in this one yet again? I think we were set up in different ways though than that last game, specifically how they approached late game fights. And OMG will definitely be reeling after this one. They go down to a match point to BLG. And I think the way that the draft planned out, BLG are in absolute prime position here. And OMG are going to have to find a way to kind of meld through what BLG are bringing to the table. <laughs> Well, no, they won't, Mizell, because you know what's going to, we both know what's going to happen. There's no <laughs> way these teams don't swap sides. So now we're going to get to see, like, hey, what is what is the blue side plan from OMG? And I feel like it's going to be very different than the blue side plan we saw here. And, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting if we just get into a situation of just blue sides trading games. Because I feel like so far in playoffs, we've gotten away I from that. Not. I feel like we have had, like, again, like EDG, OMG the other day, red side winning three of the games. But, yeah, so far, I think one takeaway we have from the series is that Early game, BLG is just better. Like game game two yeah. was a little bit closer, and you know it was like a little bit back and forth. I believe okay. BLG but. still had the gold lead, but uh, OMG had map control. Uh, but in terms of just like laning and being able to link up together, Shun being the more proactive jungler, which is something we hit on at, at the top of the day. Ben so far like, having control of every matchup in top side. Bot lane really not going uh, to a stray for either side. Yeah. It's just leading it to where once again. BLG just need to not have, you know, the gold grab dip <laughs> in like 40 minutes in the game. And, and yeah, you know, just don't make it to 40 minutes. You don't have to worry about it. It all started off that first fight, though, especially that reset coming up for Shun and the decisiveness the entire game from BLG. And I think when we've seen them in those positions to make those quick decisions, it has been pretty much all in their favor, right? And we've seen that scrapping has really come out from OMG, but this game felt a little bit different. And Yagao was on full display, Elk was on full display, and there was not much for Cream and the rest of OMG. No, just not able to find those timings. And just great setup coming up from BLG. A lot of times I was skeptical, especially not having uh, Yagao there at the start of the fight to really provide any zoning for them. And I feel like, like again, there were, there were some missteps on BLG, which is what makes this, this yeah. win all the, the stranger. I don't mean missteps in terms of like that fight that happened bot side. I mean, a lot of the fights were a little bit messy, right? Like Shun missing some abilities, not even not even only when he was taking over enemy champions, but just outright not able to find like resets and find opportunities. We saw some like discoordination, but at the end of the day, Yigao just having such a great day today for them to be able to it win. It really is right when he needs to. Well, OMG yeah. are backs against the wall. One game they lose and they are done for spring split. We'll see.